this question is more about thinking about data than really about doing anything with dplyr we're just saying think of five different ways to assess the delay characteristics of a flight right so you can think of arrival delay departure delay etc or you could also look at different distributions of delay so for example if a flight is 15 minutes early half the time and 15 min 15 minutes late half the time that's one possibility or you may have a chance that a flight is always 10 minutes late or predominantly 10 minutes late which one do you prefer okay do you prefer this where it's sometimes it's early by 15 minutes and sometimes it's late or do you want a guarantee that it's no more than 10 minutes late okay so again it depends these are value judgments it depends on the purpose for which you're doing it so you can analyze delayed uh, delay distributions in many different ways or you have a flight which is 30 minutes early 50 percent of the time and 30 minutes late 50 percent of the time okay sometimes this might be better right so you're thinking okay if it goes early quite often then I may go to that place and get something done but if it doesn't go early it's okay I'm just going to go to the hotel and sleep let's say okay so maybe this is fine rather than let's say a flight that is uh, you know sometimes arrives 15 minutes early or is always 10 minutes late okay so sometimes uh, you may have a situation where the flight is 99 percent on time and one percent of the time it's two hours late okay now this sounds like a good idea but suppose you uh, you know your task for which you're traveling is extremely time bound and you just cannot afford to be late at all okay then this may not work you might be better off taking a flight that is always 10 minutes late because at least you know you're you're bounded in terms of how late you can be whereas here sometimes it can become uncontrollably late okay so we have to look at these kinds of criteria when we analyze data generally okay and also we think about which is more important arrival delay or departure delay now we may tend to think well arrival delay is more important because we want to get to the destination on time okay but on certain conditions maybe uh, you know departure delay may be more important for you maybe you're a person who you know gets on the plane and gets to work doing something on the plane right so uh, if the plane departs late maybe you're sitting in a, a, at an airport with no Wi-Fi connection or whatever and you can't get some work done right so it's better off for you uh, that the plane leaves on time and then if it goes late it doesn't matter okay so these are all different considerations that you can think of uh, here we are saying come up with another approach that will give the same output as not cancelled count destinations that is take the not cancelled table that we created earlier and just count by destination in other words for each destination find out how many rows are there okay try to do this without using count okay of course the way to do that is count is after all just a short form for group by summarize okay so count is only a, sh a short form a shorthand for group by destination summarize n equals n that is really what count does okay so this is the way to do it without using count of course one would always prefer to use count it's just simpler shorter come up with another approach that will give you the same result as count tail num weight equals distance that is you want to count how many times each tail num occurs but as you're counting weight each of them by the distance in other words if you didn't put this weight equals distance it's going to count each tail num only once right that is each tail num has the same value one whereas if you weight it by distance then the tail num will be weighted by the distance that it made on a particular flight and this will effectively count the total distance traveled by each tail num so obviously the way you're going to do that is to group by tail num and sum the distance okay these two things are really doing the same thing let's consider this question our definition of cancel flights was the departure delay is missing and arrival delay is also missing we're saying it is slightly suboptimal because we are checking two conditions right uh, if departure delay is missing then uh, you know obviously the flight did not take off and so on so maybe departure time is the most important column if departure time is missing then maybe you would treat it as a cancel flight something to think about okay compute the number of cancel flights per day so here we are going to 
think about this. We are saying by day, so we are grouping by year, month, day. And then we are treating a flight as cancelled if the departure time is missing, NA, and arrival time is also NA. Now one could argue, well, it's enough if departure time alone is missing, right, because then the flight did not take off. That means it was cancelled. Why are we worried about arrival time? Well, sometimes we have to account for uh, you know data entry errors and so on so it is possible that for some reason they didn't enter the departure time but the arrival time is entered which means departure time is missing not because it was never there it's just that somebody forgot to enter it because after all if the flight arrived then it means that it departed so we are just playing safe by including both of these conditions here okay so again as we said before uh, you just want to for number of cancel flights is the number of flights for which this condition is true. That is either departure time, I mean both departure time and arrival time are missing. Then we treat it as a cancelled flight. So we are just adding it up. Okay. So here we are saying is the proportion of cancelled flights related to the average delay. In other words, for every day, we want to calculate the proportion of cancelled flights and we also want to calculate the average delay for each day and see if there is any connection. One would expect that there is some connection, right? Because most of the time, a uh, lot of flights get cancelled due to weather conditions. And under weather conditions, you will find that many of the flights are delayed, especially uh, the you know departure time, arrival time, whatever, right? So there, we can expect that there is some correlation. Let's check it out. So again, we are grouping by year, month, and day. And we are first finding out how many flights were cancelled, just like we did before. And proportion cancelled is basically number cancelled divided by the total number. Again, this is proportion per day, right? Because we've already grouped. And therefore, within the group, when we apply all these functions like n, you're talking about the count within the group. And number cancelled is sum, again, sum of the things within the group. And therefore, this is your proportion of cancelled flights, right? Now, we could have done mean of the same expression, right? But that this is probably a little more efficient because you don't have to go through all the rows. Just say num can by n. Okay. So this is a more efficient way of saying it. We could have done mean of this expression. But that's not efficient. Okay. So average delay, again, we are finding out the average delay, mean of the arrival delay, na dot rm equals true. Right. So we've got for every day, we've got the proportion of cancelled flights and we've got the average delay for the day. Now we are ready to plot it. We can say gg plot plot average delay on the x-axis and proportion cancelled on the y-axis. So we are trying to see if there is a positive correlation here. And then we do a geom point plus a geom smooth. And this is the result you get. Average delay by proportion cancelled and that's the smooth line. And in fact, what we expected seems to be true. Right? There is definitely a positive correlation here that as the average delay increases, you see the proportion of flights cancelled is also higher. Okay, of course, there are some outlying points and so on. Uh, but by and large, the points are all fairly closely distributed around the line. Okay, so it looks like there is some reason to believe that hypothesis is indeed true. Which carrier has the worst delays? So again, now we are going to group by carrier and calculate the average delay. Mean delay is mean arrival delay and a dot rm equals true, right? Of course, when they say delay, we have to interpret it carefully. What do we mean? Arrival delay, departure delay. We chose arrival delay in this particular case, right? And we want to see the worst delays. So we are doing a range by descending order of mean delay. And we'll take the first row. Okay? So you can answer all these sorts of questions quite easily. Now, there is also something called as grouped mutates finding the worst members of each group, right? So we're creating this data frame called flights small, where, uh, okay, I didn't create flight small earlier. I'll include that in our, uh, in the group. Flight small is basically a, uh, a data frame with uh, fewer columns. That's all it is. Okay. So group by year, month, day. And then here we are saying filter rank of descending order of arrival delay is less than 10. Okay, so we arrange it first in descending order of arrival delay and then we say take only those which have a rank of less than 10. So rank is one of the functions too which we have not discussed earlier. So that's the uh, thing. 
okay and since it is in descending order obviously the high delays will be up front so the worst members are going to be those with ranks 1 to 10 or you know 1 to 9 in this particular case okay so we can find popular destinations as flights group by destinations and filter n greater than 30, 365 okay so that means destinations that have more than 365 flights during the year that means there were more than one flight going to that destination every day on the average so we're just calling them as popular destinations so we take popular destinations and filter by arrival delay greater than zero and then find the proportion of delay arrival delay by sum of the arrival delay right so we are taking the proportions and then select day etc etc we are doing so these kinds of operations okay so what we really want to do is to show you uh, that once you have the data with you then you just come up with all kinds of questions whatever questions you have you can come up with and using the functions of dplyr you can very quickly analyze the data right so you spend more time thinking about what kind of analysis you want than thinking about how am I going to code this thing in R because dplyr is such a powerful uh, library such a powerful package that you can spend more time thinking about your problem and what you're trying to achieve than wondering how am I going to get it done with code okay so that's really powerful and uh, you will find that in your project you're sitting with dplyr all the time